derive the quadratic formula. So you can see the dad here on the telephone with his daughter peeking in to the kitchen. And he's saying, uh, yeah, homework helpline, I need to have you explain the quadratic equation in roughly the amount of time it takes to get a cup of coffee. So he's trying to teach this to his daughter, and I am going to show you where the quadratic formula actually comes from. So, step one, you should probably get a blank full sheet of paper because I don't think that this will quite fit in the amount of space that I gave you in your notes packet, unfortunately. Okay, so we are going to start with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and we want to complete the square to solve for x with these abstract a, b, and c coefficients and constants. Okay, so when we complete the square, remember the first thing we have to do is get rid of any coefficients of x squared by dividing. So we have to start here by dividing everything by a. And so now we're going to get x squared plus b over ax plus c over a equals 0. Next, we need to get c over a to the left hand or to the right hand side by subtracting it. So we're going to have x squared plus b over ax blank. And then this is going to equal, and I'm going to put the blank over on this side, minus c over a. Okay, as long as we add on both sides of the equation, it doesn't matter which order these two terms come in on that side. So the next step is to do b divided by 2 squared. My b value in this case is b over a. So how's that going to work? Well, let's find out. This is going to be b over a divided by 2 squared. Well, to divide by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So I'm going to rewrite this as b over a times 1 half squared. So bring that down here. We're going to have b over 2a squared, which is going to equal b squared over for a squared. So what do I need to add to both the left and the right? I need to add b squared over 4a squared and b squared over 4a squared on both the left and the right here. Alright, so this means that at this point I can factor the perfect square trinomial on the left. What multiplies to be b squared over 4a squared and adds to be b over a, it's going to be what we had before we squared it, which was just b over 2a. So my perfect square trinomial will be x plus b divided by 2a quantity squared and it's going to equal, now, on the right-hand side, we need to manipulate this a little bit because we've got two terms, and the denominators are not the same, so we can't subtract them yet, but we can make them so that we can subtract them. So, 4a squared and a. This denominator over here is missing 4a. So I'm going to multiply 4a times the numerator and denominator so that my new expression here will be 4ac over 4a squared. Okay, so over here I'm going to have b squared over 4a squared, that one didn't change, minus my new one over here, 4ac over 4a squared. Okay, 
So I'm going to condense this down a little bit over on the right. This is actually just b squared minus 4ac over, the denominators are the same, so 4a squared. And then on the left-hand side, I'm going to leave it as x plus b over 2a quantity squared. All right, so now we've got to take the square root on both sides. We're going to take the square root on the left, and we are going to take the square root on the right of the expressions, okay? So I am going to go ahead and have to stop here and uh, start at the top of the next page. So take a minute and make sure you've copied this all down correctly. All right, so on the left-hand side, I'm going to get x plus b over 2a equals the positive and negative square root of, and I'm going to separate. I'm going to take the square root of the numerator, b squared minus 4ac, and I'm going to take the square root of the denominator, 4a squared. Okay, it'll make sense in a minute why we want to do that. So now we check if we can simplify the radicals. Now, I cannot simplify the numerator here. Um, because I've got the subtraction symbol in here, there's really nothing I can do to the numerator. But remember, we really don't like having radicals in the denominator, so whenever possible, we want to simplify that. So the square root of 4 is just 2, and the square root of a squared is just a, so just like that, we don't have a radical in the denominator by simplifying it to be 2a. So we're going to have plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This is probably starting to look pretty familiar. And now I have x plus b over 2a equal to this amount. Well, now I can subtract b over 2a on both sides. And so x is going to equal the opposite of b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so at this point, we do have like denominators. We've got two a's in each of our denominators, so we can just combine the numerators, and we get x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our quadratic formula derived from completing the square. So, I hope you had as much fun as I did deriving this and proving where this comes from. Um, it is an important part of algebra to understand where it comes from. So, have a wonderful day.